Hey guys, Lindsay with The Scrap Room here. Today I've got a quick and easy tutorial to show you how you can make beautiful lined journaling paper using Canva and some floral clip art. Start out by going to canva.com and create a new custom sized workspace. You do need a Canva account for this project, uh, but the free version will work great. You don't need to have the, the paid pro version for this project. I'm going to be designing some US letter size lined paper, so I'm going to be working in an 8.5 inch by 11 inch workspace you can type in whatever paper dimensions you want for this project. Once your workspace opens up, pop over the elements in the left hand menu and look for the basic line element. You want to look for the one that's technically a shape. There are loads of line graphics on there, but you specifically want the plain one that's under the shapes heading because you'll be able to edit it. Click on the line to add it to your workspace, and then click and drag the line up near the top of the page. Don't worry about positioning it perfectly yet. We'll do that in a minute. Um, just for now, just move it up somewhere near the top of the page so that you've got a lot of room underneath it to work with and add more lines. With the line selected, click the stroke options up top and change it from that thick four point line down to like a, a one point line or something that's a little bit less bold. You can easily duplicate your line by selecting the line with your mouse and then hold the mouse button down while you press and hold the shift and alt keys on your keyboard and then drag your mouse down. You'll see a duplicated line appear and continue to hold the mouse button until you've spaced that line the distance that you want it. You'll see a little measurement box pop up to show you how far you've moved it. If you need it to be more precise, like for this document, I want to have it be wide ruled, which is about 0.34 inches apart. Um, to do that, it's a lot easier if you zoom in because you just have a little bit more control on the distance that you're moving that line and you can see the numbers better, obviously. So if you hold control and then use the roller ball on your mouse, or you can go to the zoom in the bottom right hand corner of your page and then zoom in a bit so that you're you've got a much more clear view of the line that you're working with and the measurements. And then click on the mouse and hold, click on the line and hold your mouse button down while you hit shift and alternate and drag your mouse down to create that duplicate line. Now I'm going to teach you a really neat trick here, so watch close. After you've clicked on the line and held it and held shift and alt and dragged it to create your duplicate line without touching anything else, press and hold control on your keyboard and press the letter D. And that's going to duplicate that last action that you just took of duplicating the line and spacing at the correct distance. And now you can hold control and hit D as many times as you want and it's going to continue to put another duplicate line the same exact distance all the way down your page. It's really important when you drop and drag that first duplicate line to get it in the exact right spot because if you move it over um, a little bit to the right or a little bit to the left when you drag it down to duplicate it and then you duplicate that action over and over each line is going to be that much off. So make sure that when you duplicate your line and drag it you drag it straight down and you use the smart guides to make sure it's lined up with that first line. Now that you've got all your lines on the page and spaced evenly, use your mouse to click and drag to select all the lines all together. And you can reposition them into the, the top left corner or wherever you want to position them. And then you can resize them all together so that they're all the exact same length of the line. You can use the smart guides to make sure that everything's all centered or highlight and select everything all at once and right click and go to a line and then click on center to make sure that your lines are centered on your workspace. Now, if you want to, you can stop here and you've got a completed line journaling page. It's wide rolled. That's great. Um, but we're going to go a little bit further on this tutorial and make some decorative journaling paper using some floral clip art designs. 
Canva has a library of designs you can use as well. Um, but if you want to upload your own designs or designs that you found or bought online, just go to Uploads in that left-hand menu and then click on the Upload Files button to add them uh, from your own device. You can also click on the three-dot drop-down menu to add entire folders of graphics all at once. This is a really handy step if you're going to be uploading a lot of different designs and you want to keep them all organized in separate files. I've already uploaded some folders for this design project, um, so mine are all ready to go. When you need to access your folders, just go over to that left-hand menu and click on Projects, and that's going to pull up all the different uh, folders that you've uploaded. Working with the PNGs is really easy. All you need to do to use them for this project is click on them in your library, and that's going to add it to your workspace itself. And then from there, you can click and drag on the element and move it all around your page. You can click and drag the little dots in the corner of the graphic to resize it. And then you can also crop it by using the short little lines that are on each of the four sides of the design and just click and drag that little bar and slide it in and it's going to crop off um, the side or the top, bottom, whatever, so that you can highlight different areas that you want or if you just want to use part of the design. So we've made a completed page, but what if you want to make some more? Go down underneath your workspace and click on the thumbnail of your page and then hold control and press D and that's going to duplicate your page design. I'm just going to select the clip art on this duplicate page and remove it. So now it's back to a line journaling page. And then let's make some more copies. Let's make a bundle of 10 different journaling pages. We're just going to repeat the same process now of dropping in a new clip art graphic on each page and then positioning it how we want it to look. You can layer multiple graphics to give your design a little more depth and dimension. Um, if you're using designs from my mega floral clip art bundle, there's a bunch of graphics that are already in groups and bouquets, so that makes this process really simple. These floral designs I'm using today are all included in my mega floral clip art bundle. I'll drop a link in the video description in case you'd like to take a closer look or um, add the bundle to your collection. There are literally hundreds of designs to play with in this massive bundle. So if you like designing floral projects, it's a great set to pick up. If you want to wrap your lines around an item, it's really easy to select individual lines or groups of lines and then just resize them by clicking the, the arrow on the side to drag it so it's a shorter line or a longer line, whatever you need. They're really easy to work with as long as you use this, this line that's technically it's a shape. Um, like I said, there's lots of different lines in the Canva graphic library that are just solid PNG files. You can't um, make the line longer or change the color or anything like that. But as long as you're using this shape line, you can do all those things really easily. If you're using a design and you want to flip it, make sure that you've got the item selected and then go to flip up top. You can flip it horizontally or vertically. You can also rotate the selected design by clicking and dragging the little circle arrows right next to the graphic. You'll notice in the top of my little library section here on the left, it says Wisteria because I'm in the Wisteria folder. Now, if you want to jump in back and forth between your different folders that you've uploaded, just go back and click on that, that file name up there, and that will take you one level higher in your folders. You can use line journaling paper for a lot of different things, whether you're printing it out for personal use or creating a digital version to sell or share. It's great for daily journaling, writing letters, making pen pal notes, making gratitude lists, keeping track of to-do lists. It's even great for organizing your thoughts for like creative brain dumps and brainstorming. Um, you can even use it in scrapbooks and planners and junk journals, anywhere you want to add pretty personalized writing space to. Another great thing about this project is that it's completely digital. So you can print out the pages as many times as you need them and you only have to design them once.
when you're in the projects folder, you can only see the most recent folders that you've uploaded. So if you're looking for a folder that you know you've uploaded, but you don't see it right there, click on that see all option. And that's going to pull up a new window that shows you all the different files that you've uploaded to your collection. Almost done here. I just want to pop back over and grab some of my um, Snapdragon designs. I really love these because they're just, they're really bold and colorful and vibrant. And they just, they're very cheery. Remember that the graphics, they don't have to all be positioned perfectly because at the end, we're going to go back through and look at all the pages all in order um, and just make sure that they all kind of go together and that the graphics are about the same size or they all have the same feel that I want them to have. Um, so I'm just kind of putting them on here how I think I want them to go. And then we'll just kind of thumb through them real quick at the bottom with the different thumbnails to polish them up at the end. You can resize graphics on their own, but you can also grab multiple items at the same time by holding control when you select multiple items and then resize them together. When you're all done designing your pages, go to share in the upper right hand corner and click download. And that's going to give you the different file formats that you can download this document as. For this one, since it's 10 pages, I would recommend downloading as a PDF file. Just make sure that you flatten it before you do so that if you open it on a different device or computer, it doesn't um, shift anything around funny. You can also download it as PNG files, but it's going to automatically download them as individual image files and zip them all together. So this one's going to be easier to download as a PDF for sure. All right, that's it. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe for more. Thanks for watching.